If you struggle with relationship anxiety, maybe you fear your partner's leaving or not being able to fully love you, then there's a lot that you can do to work on yourself. But your chances of healing and building the love that you long for could be doomed if you keep choosing the wrong partners. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a woman who kept choosing partners who were uncaring and unavailable. In her story, you're going to learn how to steer clear of Mr. or Miss Wrong and instead nurture relationships where you can feel truly content and at ease. Meet Zoe. She's not a real person. She's the product of my imagination, but based on 15 years of working as a clinical psychologist and therapist, helping people with their relationships. So you may find aspects of your own story reflected in Zoe's. Zoe is perpetually drawn to unavailable men. Some were so obsessed with their work they could never make her a priority. One was married. Another was a serial cheater and he promised her that this time he was determined to be different, but you probably guessed it, he cheated on her too. Each relationship has left Zoe more and more convinced that she'll never get the love that she longs for. But Zoe has worked hard on herself. She's understood her history and where her insecurities come from. She's been able to recognize how her anxiety can lead her to behave in ways that ultimately harm her relationships and cause hurt to her. She's been able to build her self-esteem and she's paid attention to building a group of friends so she doesn't feel so alone and dependent on one person. But now she'd really like to meet someone new. I invite you to imagine Zoe going on two dates. See if you can guess which date Zoe is going to be most attracted to. Date number one, let's call him Eddie. Zoe and Eddie meet for a coffee and they go for a lovely walk in the park. They talk about work and the things that they're interested in. And it's a very easy and relaxed conversation. At the end of the date, Eddie says, Zoe, I've really enjoyed the time we've spent together and I'd love to meet up again soon. I'm traveling next week for work, but let's put a date in the diary to have lunch. Date number two, let's call him Dave. Dave dives straight into talking about past relationships and wanting to know what Zoe is hoping for in her next relationship. Zoe tells him that she's been hurt in the past and that she's very determined that her future relationships will be different. Dave listens intently and Zoe feels very seen and heard by him. He concludes by telling her she's a really special person and unlike anyone she's ever met before and that he'd love to go on this journey with her of building a new and special relationship. How do you think Zoe is going to feel about each of these dates? Let's find out. This guy is amazing. He's so different. He has so much empathy. He's so caring. I just can't believe my luck that I met someone like this. Are you looking forward to the second date with Eddie? No, not Eddie, Dave. I mean, Eddie's nice, but Dave and I are much more in the same wavelength. He was really empathic. Oh, so you've set up another date with Dave? Well, well no, but it has only been two days and he probably doesn't want to come across as too keen. It's just not the done thing. What about Eddie? Tell me about Eddie. Eddie, Eddie was nice, but there's no chemistry. And he's already told me he travels a lot for work, so he's not going to be that available. So we're, we're going to meet up for lunch in two weeks, but I might cancel. Whoa, Zoe, slow down. There's a big difference between Dave and Eddie. Yeah, no kidding. Yes, but it might not be what you think. Eddie has made it clear to you that he's interested. He's told you where he's going to be for the next week, so you understand why he might not be in touch. And he's asked to make an arrangement to meet up with you when he gets back. He's left you in no uncertainty about his level of interest in your relationship and when you might see each other again. So, whereas Dave, you have no idea where he is or what he's thinking now, you don't know if or when he'll be in touch again. Isn't that a bit familiar? I hate when you do that. To be honest, sometimes as a therapist in these situations, I feel like I'm a real party pooper. Zoe is super excited. She has butterflies in her stomach. She just imagines that Dave is going to be the special person for her. But Dave is a repeat of several previous relationships. When he's there, he makes Zoe feel special and loved and cared for. But when he does a disappearing act with no meaningful communication at all, that inevitably activates her fear of abandonment. And with that, 
comes anxiety, jitteriness, restlessness, butterflies in her stomach. And Zoe mistakes that anxiety and all the physical symptoms it brings for chemistry and attraction. Zoe is thinking about Dave constantly, not because he's all that, but because he's making her anxious. At this point, Zoe's healthiest adult self needs to take the wheel, and that probably requires going against her longing and her desire. When I work with people who are dating, I will often ask them how attracted they are to the new person. And if the answer is 10, I get worried. A very high level of attraction can be an indication that this new person is activating old fears and anxieties. And letting those old fears and anxieties at the control panel is probably going to lead to disaster. Whereas Eddie, he's nice, but he's maybe a six or a seven. He's not all that. Zoe, Eddie is very clear in his communication with you. It's way too early for him to be declaring undying love or that you're the most special person he's ever met in his life. But what he has told you is that he enjoyed the time he spent with you, that he'd really like to get to know you. He's also told you where he's gonna be rather than doing a disappearing act. And he's asked to make a plan so you and him both know when you're next gonna meet. He's left you with no uncertainty whatsoever. But then why do I find him kind of boring? Well, maybe he is boring in comparison to the excitement in some of your previous relationships. But isn't this kind of honesty and direct communication exactly what's been missing? Look, Dr. Ruth, I can't force myself to feel attracted to someone. I just don't feel any chemistry. Oh, Zoe, what you don't feel is anxiety. And I'm worried that you're mistaking anxiety for chemistry. And I'm also worried that you're mistaking a sense of calm for being a lack of chemistry. I'm not saying that you should rush into anything with Eddie or that he is definitely the man for you. But it would seem to me that if you want to change your patterns, that going on a few more dates and getting to know Eddie would be a good place to start. If you have a fear of abandonment, then feelings of emptiness, loneliness, and a longing to be close to someone who's far away are all too familiar to you. This can create a kind of chemistry in relationships where there's a lot of ambiguity, where someone is tantalizingly close and yet unavailable. This could be with someone who you share a very strong connection and who makes you feel very special, but maybe they're married to someone else. It could be someone who blows hot and cold, one minute warm and affectionate, and the next minute distant and unavailable. These relationships can give you a taste of connection only to cruelly rip it away and leave you with intense anxiety and longing to reconnect. These people can seem very attractive. You long for them, but they're not a good catch. Their inconsistency activates your abandonment fears, leaving you anxious and longing for that person. You can mistake that anxiety for attraction and desire. You're seeing this person through the eyes of an abandoned child and you may be responding to them like a desperate child who's terrified and longing to feel safe with their caregiver rather than as a healthy adult who's making good decisions about the kinds of relationships that you want to be in. In schema therapy, we call this schema chemistry. And it's certainly chemistry, but it's not the good kind. Now, the flip side can also be true. Someone who's reliable and caring may not seem to generate the same kind of chemistry. They don't mess you about. They don't make premature declarations of undying love. They don't do disappearing acts. They're clear in their intentions and they tell you how they feel. In short, they don't leave you with uncertainty and ambiguity. They don't make you anxious. In comparison to the intense anxiety and yearning you feel for Mr. or Miss Unavailable, this partner could actually offer you the sense of calm and security that would allow you to relax and enjoy a relationship and not have your abandonment fears taking over the show. My suggestion is to be very wary of strong chemistry and to ask yourself, where is this attraction coming from? Is this person activating old wounds, old fears of being alone in the world, of not getting the love that you need, or of being abandoned? Is this person promising you the world a special relationship to solve all of your emotional pain? If they seem like a knight in shining armor, beware, they may well be a nightmare. So go very slowly if you feel strong chemistry. Call in your friends, get outside perspectives, remind yourself that you have many ways to meet your need for emotional closeness, not just this person. 
Take very good care of your abandoned child and make sure your healthy adult is at the steering wheel. And what if you meet someone who is somewhat attractive? Someone with whom you have some shared values? What if you meet someone who is kind, respectful, and clear in their communication with you? This person doesn't activate your abandonment fears. They don't make you feel anxious. And it's really important that you don't mistake that sense of calm for a lack of chemistry. A partner who is reliable, kind, and emotionally available may not sweep you off your feet, especially in the beginning, but they may be able to offer you the security and genuine affection in the long term that you've really longed for. You are going to be so proud of me. How come? Dave called. Well, after two weeks, he tells me that he hasn't been able to stop thinking about me the entire time since we met. And first I was excited, like, I'm really special. He's been thinking about me the whole time. He must really like me. But then I realized, it's been two weeks, Dave. You could have called before now. And if you were really interested, you would have. The chances are he's been exploring other options and he doesn't even have the guts to tell me. I don't want to be someone's option. So I told him, I'm not interested anymore. How did that feel? Well, first I was quite scared. I was kicking myself. Am I throwing away an opportunity for something really special here? That would be your abandonment fears talking. But then I felt kind of invincible, like I'm the one in charge. I can actually say no to someone. And I've seen Eddie three times since we last met. Ooh, he's easy to talk to. I don't know if I have strong feelings for him, but I'm really starting to warm to him. He's really thoughtful. Last week was so busy in the office. I had to work late and I was so tired. I told Eddie how exhausted I was and he shows up with my favorite coffee, telling me he hopes it'll keep me awake. It's like this little small thing that tells me he's actually paying attention to me and he really does seem to care. These sound like really good signs. Nobody can tell anything on the basis of just a few dates, but if this pattern was to continue, then it would seem that this relationship would likely be characterized by ease and security. Eddie is clear in his communication. There's no doubt about his interest in Zoe or his emotional availability. For Zoe, and maybe for you, this might seem boring at first, but this calm, easy connection is the basis of secure relationships. That's not to say there won't ever be conflict or challenges. Any relationship will have some of that. But what is absent is the drama of not knowing whether your partner is there or not, whether they care or not, whether they want to stay or not. It also makes it easier to manage conflicts when they do occur, because both you and your partner can be direct with each other, secure in the knowledge that the relationship isn't gonna just suddenly end. And when you can relax into your relationship, it's far from boring. You and your partner get to make your own adventures. Maybe you want to travel together, build a home, start a family. Maybe you want to pursue some challenging career goals and having a partner who cheers you on is just the encouragement you need. In a secure relationship, you may find you have the courage to do things that you never imagined possible. And I know that's the kind of excitement that I would like in my life. So if you find such a person, your Mr. or Miss 7 out of 10, do give love a chance to grow and be mindful that your abandonment fears don't sabotage your relationship by checking out this video right here.